Today's presentations, uh, we have uh, representatives from the Department of Innovation and Skills, Primary Industries and Regions SA and the South Australian Government Finance Authority to deal with the concessional loan issues and also in terms of taxation because there are taxation implications that have emerged as a result of bushfires and uh, we've got a very senior representative from the ATO here. At the end of the event, um, we'll, we'll do our presentations, take some questions. Uh, each of the speakers will be available for one-on-one -on -one sessions to answer specific questions that might relate to your business or questions that you have. Uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce the Mayor, Michael Pengelly, to say a few words and uh, update you on the work he and his council are doing. Thanks very much, John, and good morning, everybody. I, uh, John and I go back to about 1990, I think. He's had half a dozen different roles since then. We've known each other for a fair while, and he's a particularly good operator, honest as the day is long, and a hard worker. So uh, the island stands in good stead, and I've actually pushed a few people towards uh, John already and continue to. Uh, <coughs> we have to get everything going again. It's absolutely critical on the island. It's going to take a long time. There's a lot of angst around currently, uh, particularly uh, out in the West End. Uh, but the rest of the island community and businesses are finding it difficult as well. So uh, just by way of um, knowing where we are, we have 732, that's the latest figures I could get, there's 732 ABNs on Kangaroo Island. That went up 20 from 2015 to 2018. So there's a lot of ABNs out there. So it means a lot of small businesses around and a lot of farming businesses uh, Retired people have ABNs as well if they're self-funded retirees. So, you know, there's a lot out there that we need to uh, to pick up on. John's the man for that. Uh, just uh, <coughs> getting back to where we are locally, we are at the council. The Mayor's Fund peaked at around $5 million. There's still money coming into that. Uh, we have assessed and paying out on uh, 170 claims so far. Uh, last Friday's meeting there was another 200 applications they were processing uh, currently for next Friday uh, and more still coming in so we're not quite sure where that will finish up. There's quite a rigid process on that that has to be, it's highly accountable by the, uh, to the ATO. So we're do, using the application methods that are based on the outcome of the pinery fire so uh, there has to be evidence produced on things. It's got to be very strict and um, by and large we're getting a good reaction. Uh, people are uh, very grateful when they get it and I make the point, as I did to Pierre a while ago, that people can do with whatever they like with the money. There's not an issue. Uh, I need to put to bed, <coughs> there's a bit of a furphy been circulating about the, the farm grants and the, uh, the federal and state grants, the 75,000 farm grants, etc. Uh, there's been a bit of a furphy around that that's not happening quickly. Well, South Australia is actually doing it quicker than anywhere else in Australia. Um, it's uh, average is three to four days by the time they get the application to the time it's out. So it's really important that um, you know we get the right messages out and we do the right thing. So I, I don't want to go on because I know you want to hear the guest speakers, but I urge you if you have a problem and you don't know where to go, um, if you go to Mike, you all know Mike at the back. Put your hand up, Mike. Yeah, Mike Williams, the Recovery Coordinator, or Gentra Thewey. <coughs> um, you know, they're a go-to. Lynn Dole's a go-to. Um, I seem to be a go-to as well because, generally speaking, I can point in the right direction. Uh, it, we're not going to clean up 110-odd houses and showers. Well, shouse is a shed house, for those who don't know. They've discovered them. Um, we're not going to clean them up overnight. It's really important to understand that, and there has to be a process on that, and that's been the cause of a bit of angst around the place. Uh, we are keen to get, or well, I am, and uh, council, we're keen to get people's houses cleaned up so that they can get back on their properties or do whatever. The businesses that are not going to rebuild, and even the houses are not going to be rebuilt, they're not planning to build in 12 months, will take longer. But it's really important to get the places in the wet country cleaned up while we can and move on. So look, take it all in this morning. Don't be afraid to seek help, particularly encourage people on mental health help. To get that, that's really, really critical. There's a bit of that coming out now. So um, I wish you well for the morning. And uh, John's doing this again this afternoon at Pandana with another 20-odd people. So thanks, John. 
Um, I'd like to thank uh, KI Business and Brand uh, and also KI Tourism, Food, Wine and Beverage. Um, Pierre and Kylie are here this morning, thank you. And also KI Ag for getting the message out about the sessions that we're having. We've been active um, on the island uh, since just after the fires. Uh, Minister Pisoni uh, came over and I accompanied him on that visit. I've been a regular visitor here talking to businesses. Uh, obviously the council recovery coordinator, Mike Williams, uh, doing great work, just trying to make sure people are connected with the people who can help them. My role is an independent statutory role, but I report to the Deputy Premier, um, Vicky Chapman, who many of you would know. She's a, been a resident on the island, grew up on the island, and knows the island much better than I do. So when I talk to her about particular issues, I need to make sure I'm talking the facts. Uh, she will correct me otherwise. So um, it's, it's really quite significant that you have the number two in the state government, in Cabinet, who understands your island and issues. So please don't hesitate to raise issues with me. I will take them uh, to her, but many of you would know her, raise them directly with her if there are particular issues from a state government level or indeed a wider level that you don't think are being addressed, uh, please speak up and uh, we will endeavour to answer them. I speak up on issues. The loans were a little bit slow early on in terms of getting approval. Um, pleased to say after I did a little bit in the paper, uh, things moved on within a couple of days. My core business is alternative dispute resolution, trying to work through issues between businesses and other businesses, local government and indeed state government. It's a very broad role. We're here to help businesses navigate whatever particular difficulty that they have. There's a range of legislation which I won't uh, bore you with today, um, but it's a very, very broad role. And uh, again, that gives me capacity to deal with a whole range of issues that might arise in terms of your business. Importantly, I'm responsible for farm debt mediation, uh, which is a piece of legislation introduced by the Marshall Government and roared through Parliament, uh, probably the quickest piece of legislation I've seen in a long time. It had unanimous support. Uh, we deal with banks and financiers in terms of uh, debt issues involving farmers. And uh, we've had 15 cases so far. Of those 14, we've navigated a pathway forward for the farmer, as opposed to foreclosure, which was what they were facing. So that's a significant thing to keep in mind on the island. Uh, I know the banks have given some latitude, but some of these issues will emerge further down the track, and we are there to help you and uh, the farmers with those should they arise. Also working importantly in the rural area is rural business support and I'd like to call on Brett Smith, the CEO of Rural Business Support, to say a few words about the work that they do around the state, working uh, with farmers uh, in terms of their financial situations and indeed working with my office. Uh, rural business support, uh, integral in terms of farm debt, uh, we encourage farmers to talk to rural business support and get that support literally. But I'll introduce Brett Smith. Thank you. Thanks, John. Well, thanks, John. Um, Mayor Michael Pengelly. Um, yeah, look, rural business support. Uh, we're we're a business that uh, is, uh, is has been around for a, a number of years. We've been around since around about 2012. Uh, in fact, we go back further than that to 2005 when we were called the Rural Financial Counselling Service of South Australia. Um, we've renamed ourselves in two, 2012 because we, we thought we could do a lot more with um, uh, rural um, and regional businesses um, and uh, that, that is working outside of the Rural Financial Counselling Service uh, to um, deliver more services uh, to help um, small business uh, and also um, farming businesses outside the Rural Financial Counselling Service. But um, the Rural Financial Counselling Service is a, a federally and state funded program. Um, it's a program that's set up to help uh, eligible primary producers, fishers and small related rural businesses uh, to, to take action, manage and deal with risk um, and to respond to um, uh, the situation that they're in. And, and the crisis like we're seeing here on Kangaroo Island is a classic example uh, where um, obviously the effects of the crisis will be felt over time and, um, and our counsellors, our rural financial counsellors, will be there to be able to help and work with you 
um, I guess, when the longer term effects of the fire really start to take uh, effect on the P&L and the balance sheets of your businesses. Um, we're already working with a number of uh, uh, primary producers here on the island. Um, and uh, so it's nothing's new to us. We've got a councillor that has been here for some time, uh, Russell Trainer, and uh, we've had a councillor here uh, since the fire uh, it, pretty much each day um, at the recovery centre. The sort of things that we do, um, you know, we do things like we get you to, um, to understand your financial position better. Uh, we look at future projections and scenarios. We prepare for bank meetings. I mean, the banks are all nice at the moment, but you know, over time, those discussions will get tougher um, and we can help. Um, our people are trained to help in those discussions. Succession, family meetings, I mean, out of situations like this, um, tough discussions start to occur after six, 12, two years. And I should say, um, if we start working with you, it's free, confidential, um, and we are there for the long term. We are there for three or four years. We can help you up to four years. Um, and so we get quite, I guess, intimate with your business um, as we go forward. Um, we can also help with, um, uh, you know, get, get, get you to understand what other help is available. Uh, income support, for example, through the FHA. That's another um, federal program. And to help with things like applications. Um, so we're, we're here for the long term. Uh, we will have a counsellor here full time, um, working alongside the other services and, um, and, and with John, etc. Um, and uh, anyone who needs to talk to us, please don't wait. Talk to us now. We can help you um, uh, if you wait and you let things get bad over time. Um, that's when it gets harder. Um, and uh, the earlier we can sit down and work on the things I just spoke about, the better. Um, so I look forward to um, seeing you all um, um, over time, um, and we're here to support you and, and be there uh, as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. I'll now call on Nikki Becker from the Department of for Innovation and Skills to walk you through the Small Business Grant uh, process and the, the great work the department are doing in that area and hopefully at the end of this, the session we will have a, a question time so we'll move through the presentations pretty quickly so if we can save our questions till the end and we'll get all the speakers up and we'll deal with them one by one. Thank you. Thanks Nikki. I'd hoped that we'd be able to announce that we had financial counsellors available for all small businesses today. Unfortunately, we've had a slight hiccup in that, but hope to be able to announce the person that will be on the island actually helping every small business um, very, very shortly. So watch this space. Unfortunately, we're in government, and government does sometimes take a little bit of time to actually get things done. Um, Department for Innovation and Skills has... We work very closely with John as a small business commissioner. Um, we have ultimate responsibility for supporting small business in South Australia. Um, it's only just become part of our department so we were just in the process of releasing support packages before the fires hit so fires have taken on all of our time and energy and we yeah we feel your pain at the moment unfortunately um, my name's Nikki Becker I'm the director in charge of small business for the state um, and at the moment my life is revolving around the bushfire and the bushfire grants um, I can answer 99.9% .9 of your questions today and I also have someone from the National Bushfire Recovery Agency here as well who proclaims to be an expert. Um, <laughs> um, the guidelines are changing on a daily basis as well so I just you need to be aware of this. We are working very closely with the Commonwealth to actually make changes to make things better and easier for everybody but again it does take time. This is a Commonwealth and state program so we have to get buy-in from all the states and the Commonwealth to make changes so we're working on things it will happen but just watch this space we'll let you know of changes that are made like I said small business bushfire recovery grants jointly funded by the Commonwealth and state so therefore we must abide by Commonwealth guidelines these are not individual state guidelines they are Commonwealth that's what we're working with and these, these grants in particular are for support for small businesses that have suffered direct damage. Now direct damage doesn't necessarily mean that you were actually burnt. It might mean that you lost stock because of the fires. You know, your stock 
you had a power outage, your stock was lost. You are therefore direct, directly damaged. You may have smoke issues in curtains and carpets and things. You are directly damaged. So there are ways that we can get around directly damaged. This does not cover income loss. That's the only thing I need to make sure you're all aware of. So these grants are $50,000 which is for clean-up, reinstatement and re-establishment of your small business. If you're not planning on re-establishing, it's unlikely that we can offer you assistance. But if you are planning on re-establishing, well then yes, we can. <sighs> Pretty basic eligibility. You have to be a small business owner. You have to hold an ABN and you have to have a business that was in the fire zone. Kangaroo Island, the entire island, is classified as being in the fire zone and obviously you have to have suffered direct damage. You also need to have been carrying on a business at the time of the fires. Um, this is not support for people that wanted to establish a business in January and the fire started in December. And you also need to be primarily, you know, this is government rubbish, but you need to be primarily responsible for meeting the costs that you are going to claim in, the, um, in re-establishing your business. And, like I said, you need to be intending to re-establish, very essential. Grant monies can be used for pretty much anything. Pretty much. Um, and we are quite flexible about what people can actually use the money for. Um, we want to encourage people to talk to us because we will find a way, generally, to make sure that your expenditure that you need to claim is covered under the grant. And whether that is us talking directly with the National Bushfire Recovery Agency to make sure that that is okay. Sometimes we do need to do that, but generally we will find a way to make sure it happens. So just some of the very, very basic things that grant monies can be used for. Safety inspections, just to make sure, you know, that it's safe to be on your site. Equipments and materials to clean up your properties. Replacement equipment. Um, cleaning expenses removing and disposing goods due to your power outages, um, removing and disposing of debris and damaged materials, spoiled goods, goods and stock, repairing buildings, re replacing fittings, leasing pre um, premises if, if you need to lease new premises. There are a multitude of things that we can actually use. So come and talk to us. This is what we actively encourage talk to my small business team, we are all available and we will help you find a way through this process. Grant monies are not payable, so we, there is always a out in being a government program. If you can get insurance for those actual expenses, then it's not um, claimable. However, if you've got a $150,000 loss and you can only get $20,000 worth of insurance, you have a gap that we can help you with. So. Just because if you get full insurance, you're not, you can't claim. If you have a gap, yes, we can help you. Now, if you get other government funding, generally you cannot claim a small business grant. So PERSA versus um, small business grants, it's a bit of a grey area at the moment that we are working through. If you are in this situation, you need to talk to us, but it will take a little bit, of, little bit longer for us to resolve. Every case needs to be treated quite separately, but I'll talk about that in a minute. And like I said, loss of income is definitely not claimable under this set program. Separate businesses. So this, and I know there's probably a few people in this room that actually care about separate businesses. Um, we, like I said, these are grey areas that we are having with primary industries and small business grants. Generally, they're where it fits. And it's whether two businesses are operating under the same ABN. And it does happen, and it happens quite a bit on this island from what I'm starting to see. If you can clearly identify that you have different staff on both businesses, or you have a separate plant, or you keep separate financial records, or you have different trading names, it makes it so much easier. And I can sort you out pretty, pretty quickly. If you don't, it does take longer. So these are the things that I understand are causing concern for some people on the island. I want to reinforce that we are trying to work through this and we are treating each case individually when this is a situation. One thing we have to do is just, um, we will look at commercial viability and autonomy of each business when we're making a decision. Um, 
Generally, in this case, we will ask for more information, so just be prepared that we will potentially request more detailed financial records um, and, you know, evidence of how you do separate your business out. It's not because we're trying to be difficult. It is because this is actually government money and I get audited and if I get in trouble, I don't know what will happen to me. Um, supporting documentation. Look, we're, we're really easy about supporting documentation. Um, our grants are paid in two lots of 25,000. However, you can claim the full 50 up front and we encourage you to. We encourage, encourage everyone to apply for $50,000 no matter what their damage because you'd be surprised at a month down the track you go, oh, actually, hang on, I forgot about this expenditure that's about to hit. And if you've claimed for the full 50 and we've approved your full 50, then we can just give you the extra money. It's not a big deal. Otherwise, you have to go through a whole application process again. So for the first 25,000 tranche, all we really need is photographic evidence of the damage, which 99% of people have got, appropriate evidence, and evidence of the financial impact. And that can literally be a quote, something really quite simple about how much it's going to cost to um, replace whatever it is. But for the second 25,000, we actually need to see proof that you've spent the money. So it can be a receipt from the local truck dealer, whatever, not that there's a truck dealer on the island, but you know, for a $68,000 replacement tipper truck. It's shown that it's paid, therefore we will pay you. So it's, it's really that simple. We don't want to incur, we don't ask for extra documentation. This is really quite simple. Um, but what I also say is if you don't have the evidence up front, still come and talk to us because we will help you through the process. We will find a way to help you through. That's pretty much it for grants. Grants, yes, there's some grey areas, but it is pretty straightforward. Like I've said, I actively encourage people to come and talk to us, give us a call, send us an email, whatever it may be, because we will help you find a way through this process as quickly as I possibly can. Um, working with as many agencies as I can, but we will help you. Ultimately, government, federal and state want to invest in you guys. This is not necessarily us giving you money, but it's investing in you, helping you re-establish and hopefully helping you grow better. That's what we want to do. We're here to make sure that, that it happens as much as we can. So come and talk. My team is always available 24-7. So. The next side of the state government and Commonwealth government grants uh, relate directly to the, the farming sector and they're being administered by PERSA and uh, to give you all the information on that is someone who would be very familiar to many on the island, Lynn Doley. Thanks, Lynn. Morning, everyone. So, took over everything back here. Um, I just thought I'd run through, this is the basic funding that's available through PERSA. Um, Faye Stevenson's been sitting out at the Recovery Centre and I think most of you know where our office is in Kingscote. So for any of these funding applications, either call into our office or go out to the Recovery Centre. We've got them out there and we can certainly help you through the whole process. So the, there's a range of um, support systems that we've got out there, which I'll run through these in a bit more detail. So one's the... Sorry, the mic, thank you. A little bit short, aren't I? Um, the on-farm water rebate. Now, this is because we were drought declared, so that funding is actually available to any farmer across the island, whether they're impacted by fire or not. Then there is the $75,000, which is for those that were in the fire scar. For anyone that is on the farm household allowance, there's a 50% rebate for um, a council rates. I think council rates have, have they been sent out, Mick, or they're about to be sent out, so you can get a rebate on that. And I'll also mention the Family Business Support Mentor Program we've got running on the island. So they're people who can actually help you through the whole grant process. We've already heard about the Rural Financial Counselling Services. So the water rebate, as I said, this is available because we are drought declared. Um, there's actually been a change to this. Originally it was a 25% rebate. It's now up to 50%. And it's basically for any works that you've taken on your property back from July 2018 through to March 2021. And it's all about becoming more, um, shall we say, resilient for drought. So it can be anything from, anything to basically do with infrastructure to do with moving water. So it can be pipes, pumps, um, tanks, troughs, solar pumps, desilting of dams. So not new dams, but cleaning out old dams, 
um, putting in bores, any of the expert um, assistance you need to get those systems up and running. So basically think about anything to do that's to do with moving, storing, holding water. It doesn't cover water cartage, but anything else to do with your water management. Um, there's been a couple of changes to this program. As I said, it's increased up to 50%. And you can actually now apply as many times as you like. Originally, you can only apply once. But what you can do is you can get all your invoices of what you've done now, submit your application, get that funded, and then next summer you need to clean out another couple of dams, then you can get that work done. This one is paid on your actual invoices, so you do need to have your invoices. If anyone um, has been out in the fires and you've lost all of your invoices and records, Elders, Landmark, Ingrams have been really good at finding out your historical invoices. So if you know that you've spent money but you no longer have the evidence for them, go back to the place where you've got your products and they'll better pull your invoices up for you. So that's the, the water one. Probably the big one for most people is this $75,000 one. And again, it's a bit like the small business one. It's basically covering any cost you've incurred in your cleanup and anything that you've lost, anything you need to basically get going again. So it's really about supporting farmers to get back up and start producing again. So it's your clean up. For a lot of farmers, it's where your insurance doesn't cover your full cost of your fences, um, fodder, it can be adjustment. So anything on your livestock side to basically get up and going again. Um, some of the beekeepers, their primary producers, they're tapping into this funding for anything they've lost in the fire. So really think it's about what you've lost and what you need to get going again. Um, as Michael said, there's been we're trying to get the grants turned around as quickly as we can. Basically, once we have all your information, then we're trying to get them turned around within a week or so. And I'm, I have to be honest, a team in Perth that are dealing with them, it was great for a start because it was only a sort of a, it was a small trickle coming through. They've basically been slammed with a whole lot of applications in one hit. So the timelines have blown out a little bit more, but they are going as four, four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah, so it could be up to three to four weeks. Originally, it was within a week, um, but they are... They're getting through them as quickly as they can. If you have applied and you're not sure where your application is in the process, certainly give me a call. We can see where, where it's at. But yeah, understandably, as I mentioned before, I mean, there is a bit of due diligence, so they do have to check off and make sure that all the information has been sent through. But if you are concerned, you want to know where your application is and there's an absolute urgency to get it through, certainly give me a call and we'll see if we can get it through a little bit more quickly. The advantage with our grant is you don't have to have any invoices. It's all done on estimates. And I'm saying all the years I've worked in government, to be honest, I've never seen an application form that is so easy to fill in. It is literally a tick the box. This is what I need. Here's a couple of photos of what I've lost. And here's my council rate notice to prove that I actually live on Kangaroo Island. So it really is, as I said, one of the simplest and easiest forms I've actually seen. And I said, we're here to help you fill it in. So certainly if you haven't yet applied and you want to know more, have a chat to me. But I'm certainly encouraging every farmer to apply. And I said, the the only thing we've got is we've put on some local, we did have Steve Willis and Robin Kane that came over from the mainland as fab mentors. We've now put on three locals, Ros Wilson, Tracy Heinrich and Warren Martin. And their role is basically to help you through the grant process, but any other help and assistance that you need. So we call them a bit like a drafting gate. You turn up and you go, oh, I don't know where I need to go and what I need. They can actually sit down with you, work you through the process, put you in touch with the Royal Councillor or... Um, other financial support or other farm management support, basically whatever it is that you need, they can help you work you through the process. As I said, work you through and help you with the, the grants and any other help and assistance that you need. And they will come out to your farm, they'll come and meet you wherever you are, and it's going to be an ongoing. So it's not just we're here to help you today and that's it. They'll keep working with you for as long as you need to work through the process. And they are also Yes, yes. So they're basically across both of them. And we've already mentioned off on the Rural Financial Counselling Service, so I won't repeat that one. But as I said, I think all of you, hopefully you know me, you know Faye, we're around, we can put you in touch with whoever you need to put you in touch with and help you through with the grant process. Thank you, John. One of the um, key areas of support that has broadened out, and um, I'm very pleased to see uh, there was a fair amount of lobbying that went on to get some movement in this area, um, and I talk directly to Michaelia Cash, the Small Business uh, Minister, about some of the issues that we we're facing immediately post bushfires. And the Federal Government, uh, with the State Government, have put in um, concessional bushfire loans which can also help those who've been indirectly affected by the bushfires. Now that's a, that's a very real experience 
uh, in both the Adelaide Hills and here on the island uh, in terms of the tourism sector. And I'm very pleased to say we've got Rebecca Wigglesworth from the South Australian Government Financing Authority to walk you through uh, the process in terms of the con concessional loans and provide you with the information necessary that might assist you in applying. Rebecca, thank you. And thank you, everyone. So, um, yes, I'm from the South Australian Government Financing Authority, and I've got my colleague here, Marty Garrett, um, today, and we're happy to talk to you individually uh, later. I think we've allowed time for that. Um, I'll just basically go through um, the loan scheme at a broad level. Uh, similar to what Nikki was saying, this is a Commonwealth scheme, so this uh, loan scheme is being rolled out nationally and the guidelines were established by the Commonwealth Government and they're being applied by each of the states. So we're in SAFA administering the loan scheme on behalf of the South Australian Government um, and we report to the Treasurer. So the loans uh, sit with the Treasurer. Um, so I'll just I'll briefly explain who SAFA is because you've probably never heard of us. Um, we're an uh, incorporated entity sitting in with the Department of Treasury and Finance. Um, in, a, in a broad sense, we manage the state's financial exposures and risk, um, and we serve the Treasury function, so we raise money for the government uh, to implement its infrastructure program. Um, we serve as the captive insurer, SACORP, um, and we manage the commercial fleet operations, and we also manage the industry assistance portfolio. Um, so that's a, a portfolio of grants and loans that's been um, provided to industry for economic outcomes in the state. A lot of that is about job creation and investment. Um, so we manage line, loan schemes at the moment. We're managing the non-government uh, non schools loan scheme. Um, and we've managed other loan schemes like the Wyala Small Business Loan Scheme when um, Arian went into administration. So we, we're um, sort of experienced in providing these sorts of support um, mechanisms. So um, with the uh, concessional loan scheme for bushfires, um, now as I say, these, uh, these are the requirements that were established by the Commonwealth. They're consistent across uh, all the states and territories in Australia. Um, so there's three eligible entities for small business, um, not-for-profit organisations and primary producers. Um, there's certain criteria as to what uh, those entities look like. Um, and if you have any, I can see that a number of uh, businesses have started applying online for these loans. Um, and I can see that these uh, applications haven't been completed. If you have any questions, I encourage you to contact us um, because I think the requirements to access the loans may look a bit onerous and daunting. There's some um, requirements for, um, you know, to, it, it, for us to verify your business, how it was trading, your, um, the loss suffered and things like this. Um, I think the website talks about financial statements and, and various other things. Now, some of that can be flexible. Um, so um, I encourage you to speak with us. So if you don't have, you know, financial statements for last year or you don't even have financial statements, you might have tax returns. Um, so, you know, there's other ways that we can um, look at these, uh, the information. Um, so the loans, are there's two types of loans, two loan products as we would call them. There's loans for up to 50,000. They're five-year uh, loans and they're unsecured. Um, there's loans for up to 500,000, so half a million dollars. We will take security and they have a 10-year term, so there's a longer payback period on those. Um, the, the actual loan amounts um, will be recommended to the Treasurer and approved after an assessment of the applicant's financial position um, and that includes um, assessing the serviceability of the loan. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. <clears throat> the loans are intended for replacing or repairing damaged assets and um, for working capital expenses over the next 12 months that cannot be met due to a loss of income. Um, so the working capital loans are similar to the grants, I think, in many respects. So it's for essential expenses while the business returns to normal trading. That can include paying bills, salary and wages, rent, lease uh, rates, any sorts of expenses not ordinarily incurred in managing the business. Um, and um, so primary producers uh, can be used for purchase of stock, replanting, restoring 
or re-establishing areas affected by the disaster, including the purchase of fodder, water for livestock and transport. Um, there's, other, there's other things as well, but that's just an example. Um, so the eligibility, eligibility criteria is that you must be able to demonstrate there's a link um, between the bushfire and the damage caused or the loss of income. Um, I think that's probably fairly easy for a number of you. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that things have been burnt either. So I think for um, sort of vineyards, um, uh, the Commonwealth has accepted smoke taint as direct damage. Um, so and, and loss of income, well, I guess it's difficult to talk about that um, in a broad sense because that will be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, that you know, for tourism operators, for example, we would look for, um, and you would be able to provide us evidence of cancellation of bookings and refunds and things like that. So, um, so that's the sort of thing that we would um, look for. And again, you know, this is a public, this is a scheme with public money, so uh, and it's accountable <laughs> and auditable, similar to the grants and similar to um, you know the mayor's uh, scheme. So. Um, we do need to meet some minimum documentary requirements. Um, so, um, so businesses, there's seven local government areas that are eligible um, for loans, and Kangaroo Island in total being one of those. Businesses must have an ABN. They must be engaged in carrying on a business or, or a farm activity at the time of the bushfire. Um, applicants must be able to demonstrate the business has a reasonable prospect of long-term viability and intention to re-establish or continue trading on in Kangaroo Island. Um, so what we ask for in the application process is um, a plan for at least 12 months, depending on the size of the loan, at least 12 months. Um, I think if loans are up to 500000 um, that's for three years. But Look, we're not making that onerous. We just need to understand that you've thought about when you get the money and the assistance, what you're going to do with it, and you've got a plan to move forward to re-establish. I know there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment, particularly with tourism, but you know it's just your best, your best effort at putting something together in a broad sense. Um, so you must be able to demonstrate the capacity to repay the loan. So we'll look at the serviceability. Um, and uh, now this one is a little bit, this last condition is causing a little bit of angst. Um, and uh, so the Commonwealth guidelines say there's no reasonable prospect of obtaining commercial finances or if it can be obtained, it would place the entity in financial difficulty. Now that's causing us a bit of difficulty to... Um, Implement. Um, it's not clear what that means, but I guess from our perspective, we'd be looking at it reasonably. Um, obviously, there's a range of lenders that will provide money, um, but you know, if you're to go um, to a payday lender, for example, to be able to pay your bills, I mean, that's not going to be a viable situation in the long term. So it's going to be a, a judgment for a case by case basis. But we would, the state would seek to be reasonable in applying that criteria. Um, I understand the Commonwealth's reconsidering that criteria, so um, which I think has been requested from someone in this island, and that's been passed through. Um, so that may change, um, but at the moment we're, we, we are sort of bound by it and um, from our perspective we'd be looking to apply it in a reason, you know, reasonably. Um, so the purpose of this loan scheme and the grant scheme is to support businesses, to get them re-established and to make them viable again. Um, so we wouldn't you know, look to uh, enforce that too strictly if it doesn't suit that purpose, you know. Um, so the assessment of eligibility is, again, this is uh, evidence-based, so you need to be able to provide some documentation. Um, and again, we can be flexible in that, so I encourage people to talk to us. Um, so what we're looking for in a broad sense is that you have, have a viable trading enterprise before and at the time of the disaster. Um, the damage is, uh, to property is not covered by insurance. Um, again, these loans can fund the gap. So uh, a lot of times the insurance payout is not going to fully uh, compensate for your loss. Um, the loans can be applied for the gap. 
Um, so uh, loss of income, we would look to um, the deterioration in your working capital. So it's the you've drawn your overdraft, um, you've used other liquid assets to be able to pay your bills. And we can see that. So we've asked for trading history. That's why we've asked for that. And we've asked um, for your current position. And we, we would look to see that evidence of loss. Um, so, and, and again, a plan to re-establish. Just some evidence that you've thought about when you get the money, how you're going to move forward. And I know there's a lot of uncertainty about that. But it's just that, you know, you, you've thought about what you need to do, what you need to purchase, what the time frames are you know, how much money you need, where you're going to get the funding, that sort of thing. Um, and I think, I think the financial counselling could probably help you there as well, put those things together. Um, again, we're not trying to make it onerous, but we do, you know, we're still at, we're trying to balance the public accountability as well. Um, so the loans over 50,000, they require security. So we'd look to take a mortgage or uh, security over other assets, plant and equipment, um, so again, you can speak with us about uh, those requirements and they're flexible. Um, so, and we, again, similar to the grants, we would look to, that, to see that you haven't received other government assistance um, or um, insurance uh, for the loss that's claimed. Um, so the loans themselves, they have a two year repayment holiday and that's interest free. So no interest accrues for two years and no payments are required for two years. Um, following that period, the $50,000 loans have a, have a three-year repayment term of principal and interest, amortising to zero at the end of the term. And the 10-year uh, loans will have an eight-year uh, principal and interest payment uh, at zero at term 10. Um, the loans can't be uh, redrawn. Um, so uh, that's that one. Concessional rates of interest uh, will apply. So the rate of interest is is very favourable. It's um, half of the 10-year Commonwealth bond rate um, and that's reset every year. So um, at the moment the interest rates aren't moving a lot and they're moving down. So um, at the moment that rate looks like 0.8%. Um, there's no fees or other charges applied to that. So that is actually what you would pay. Um, so um, there will be ongoing reporting obligations um, just for the acquittal of the loan and, um, you know, to ensure the business is uh, uh, doing well um, and able to service uh, the loan obligations into the future. Um, now this is just uh, the usual uh, disclaimers apply to uh, ap applying for funds. So uh, we're certifying that we ask you to certify the information that you provide is correct. Um, and then when uh, and if a loan's approved by the treasurer, um, you'll be required to enter into a loan uh, agreement. Um, again, the the loan agreements will differ based on uh, the quantity uh, the, the quantum of the loan. So fifty thousand. There are relatively short uh, agreements. Uh, not the conditions we're trying not to make onerous, um, but at the same time we've got to bal balance the public accountability. Um, and have I got anything else? Oh, so there's some contact details there. So I would encourage you to contact Safa, um, and uh, or email us, phone us, uh, and speak through any queries that you have because um, we'd be pleased to help you. One of the issues that's come up relatively early in the piece is the issue of taxation and how that uh, impacts in terms of asset replacement, insurance payouts, etc. We work very closely with the ATO uh, and at a very senior level to try and sort out issues which are broader than the one-on-one -on -one issues. And I'm delighted that we've got Andrew Watson, who's a very, very senior person with the ATO here today, to talk through the ATO's current position in relation to bushfires, but also again to answer questions at the end of the session. We'll uh, have a question and answer se session. Andrew, thank you. Thanks, thanks, John. I'm not sure if very senior means I'm getting on an age now or, <laughs> or not. Um, so I, I'm an Assistant Commissioner based in our office in Adelaide, but my role is around um, working with small business across the country and particular had a focus um, around supporting small businesses through natural disasters. Um, I'll focus 
more on the what we are doing and have done around bushfires, but it is part of overall our approach to helping in difficult times. And, and unfortunately, over the last 12 months, uh, I've been uh, involved in some of our work with people impacted by drought. Um, 12 months ago, those in far north Queensland in particular uh, impacted by floods. Uh, and then now we have overall uh, with, with bushfires. So the, the support that we can offer, um, it doesn't just apply to bushfires and we are mindful of the combination of the impact of droughts and bushfires and other cumulative impacts on people as well. So um, main thing, one of the main messages and in your, your show bag, uh, this number is in there. It's our emergency support line, 1800 806 218. If I'll explain some of the more broader um, things we have done for the whole of KI and the whole of, of areas impacted by bushfires. But if there is something worrying you, if there's something about your individual circumstances, we've got dedica dedicated people on that call line who can work with you um, around your situation and your arrangements. So those people can give you extra time to lodge and pay um, your tax. Um, Rebecca was saying before around some of the documentation you might need to access some of these grants. If you need copies of tax returns, notice of assessments, activity statements, um, you, you've lost all your TFNs being burnt, these people can help you. So um, it, it's one where you can get direct one-on-one -on -one help through through that. Normally, most governments look to push to a website. <laughs> we're, we're no different. But in this situation, the best point of call is one-on-one -on -one talk to someone. Um, said there is a lot of information on the website if, you, if that is what you want, want to, to look at. ato.gov.au slash natural disasters is the quick way to find it. It has the full list of, um, of postcodes, impacted areas, um, etc. and some of the, the blanket treatments we provided as well as what you, you can have. Um, but some of the things we're trying to do in a practical sense is around prioritising refunds and as it says there, looking at where we are automatically doing that if it's in um, identified postcodes. So just to be clear, 5220, 5221, 5222, 5223 are all classified by us as impacted postcodes. Any individual or business with a residential or a business or a postal address with the ATO within that area um, is included in that and our system's now automatically looking where there is a refund going through to actually push those, those, those out quicker. Um, if for some reason you, you're, you're operating on the island but you're not sitting within those postcodes on our records, again, if you give us a call, we can actually work through and look to if you've got a refund to actually get that, get that fast tracked and prioritised. Um, so I'll just briefly talk through a few other things where um, you might be able to access either some, some money or a refund out of the ATO. A bit unusual, I know, to be talking around that, but just some things to, to keep in mind. Ideally, um, as well though, you can, you can talk to us in that line, but if you've got a tax or BAS agent, you know, you've got an advisor that you, you currently work with, please continue to talk with them. We've been doing a lot of work with um, tax and BAS agents to make sure they're really well informed, got access to lots of information, and similarly they've got a dedicated line direct into the ATO to be able to help help their clients in the impacted areas. Superannuation, it is, um, it is designed, and there's a lot of the laws, it is around retirement savings, but in exceptional circumstances, in, in extreme hardship, um, you can get early access to it. So. It is something to, to um, consider if you need it around um, access to that. Dedicate a number there, 13, 10, 20, is because superannuation, the laws work a little bit differently there, so there's some specialists who can help you with that. Um, lodgement and payment of uh, income tax returns and activity statements. We made, the Commissioner made a decision in January to have a blanket deferral through to the 28th of May this year. So anything that's been due, so um, the December quarterly BAS uh, was due last Friday for um, uh, as the usual date. But again, anyone in those those postcodes that I've listed, 
with KI and whether it's an, an or business, postal or residential address, we are automatically deferred those obligations through to the 28th of May. Now something to keep in mind is, if you're going to lodge an activity statement that's got a refund, I'd encourage you to lodge it, you know, to get your money. Like, I know it's, it, it's actually it's worth it. And again, that's where that, if you've got that relationship with a, a, an accountant, bookkeeper, um, tax agent, you know, to actually work through, is, is there some stuff that might actually help you out with some cash flow um, a, as well as being mindful of, you know, you've, you've got some time before you need to um, meet all of these obligations. Super guarantee is a, a little bit of a different kettle of fish. So if you employ people, um, you're aware you need to, need to pay money into their super account. Because that money, it's not tax money, it's actually money that goes from an employer into an employee super fund. It gets treated very differently under the law. We don't, the Commissioner of Taxation does not have discretion to be able to defer those payments um, or any of the interest that applies. So if, if you are in financial uh, difficulties around those obligations, you need to, this is the one you probably should prioritise. It, it's the one that we, we've got less, le least or pretty well no flexibility um, around that. If you are having issues, yep, call us. That's the best thing to do is actually talk to someone first and to see what we can can do. Um, but it is really important to understand that, that the superannuation guarantee payments to employees are, are treated differently. Some things, again, to consider, talk to your advisor uh, about, but um, if you're in a situation now that you're buying, you're restocking, rebuilding, um, you might be in a situation where you've got GST credits without GST to pay. If you're currently a quarterly activity statement lodger, you can switch to monthly. Um, you need to, to notify us, and if you notified us now, you would go from the April um, activity statement would go monthly, you could lodge and get your refund quicker than having to wait quarterly. So it's just something that, that a, a, as um, you might be accessing um, either some of the, 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 the grants, loans, etc., and starting to, to spend some money, if you're in that situation, you might be able to bit get refund just to help your cash flow out, out a bit. I won't go into the details, I'm more than happy to talk to people um, separately afterwards, but pay as you go instalments it is effectively your income tax you pay along the way through your activity statements. If earlier in the financial year that started on 1 July, you paid, say in, the, in a September quarterly activity statement, you paid tax through pay-as-you-go instalments and now you don't have that income, there can be options to be able to vary that and get that tax credited back and refunded. So again, it, it's a little bit complicated and it really depends on your individual circumstances. If you've got that advisor, talk to the advisor. Happy to chat afterwards, or again, our, our people on that um, emergency support line can help uh, help you work through that. Um, we did put a hold on any tax and superannuation audits in any of the impacted postcodes um, through the 28th of May. That was part of our, our blanket um, deferral process. Um, that doesn't mean those issues uh, have have gone away or an amnesty. Um, we are looking at the moment how we would start to, to re-engage, but re-engage understanding of, of what people's situation um, situation is. So um, so we have temporarily suspended, suspe suspended that. If um, As we get nearer to the 28th of May, we will start contacting businesses or their tax agents around, around there, around how we can work through that. If for some reason there was something going on and you would rather now to, to finish it off, you know, if that would actually help you to do that, again, ring that number and we can, can engage with you and actually look to, to um, uh, resolve anything that might be uh, un, under an audit or a review. Assistance payments, it, it's one of those um, things of life with the, the tax system. Some of the payments that are available, it, there's a mixture around whether they have tax consequences or, or whether they don't. Um, insurance payments can be the same. If you're getting an insurance payment for income replacement, generally that's it's to replace income that would have been taxable, so that's has tax consequences. Um, if you're getting an insurance payment for your family home, then generally that's not because your family home isn't a taxable thing. Um, 
Similarly with some of the, the, the payments for, from government, there has been some legislation around um, the volunteer bushfire payment to make sure that that's not taxable. But it, it is worth checking out, and again with your advisor, um, around what of those payments um, and depending on what you're using the money for um, or the payment is for, whether it does have a, a, a tax, uh, tax consequence for you. So again, we can help you on that hotline, but if you've got that existing relationship with, with an advisor who understands your situation, um, they're the best port of, port of call. I jumped ahead of myself a little bit around the, the damaged property being around um, uh, insurance. Obviously, the with property being damaged as well from the point of view of depreciation um, deductions for that, that there are some, some um, things in there to, to consider. Um, a bit of a theme that uh, I know John talks about a, a lot. Um, it is a part of, as part of the whole of, of government response. Um, we are mindful around mental health of people impacted. It is where, again, those people on our uh, emergency support line um, both have some uh, training around being aware of that, um, but uh, also to, can help as far as to, to make sure we provide information and referrals um, around, around what uh, you can, can do there. But it's probably as much the message being our people are, we try to make our people as aware as we can of this. Things like after this this session and other sessions around the country that we go to, we try to spread some of the community feedback because people under the second try to understand how it's impacting different communities differently. The usual ways to um, uh, be able to get some some information uh, from us, but overall with this, as I said, um, and John said, be around to actually have a chat or answer any questions um, from you now. But also, as I said, in the show bag number, this sort of situation I think is best with a conversation with someone. So um, conversation with your tax or your BAS agent or a conversation with people on our support line as the best way that we can, we can help and support you. Thank you. And Andrew touched on a very important point in terms of mental health and some of the issues that are certainly arising and will continue to arise for some time in terms of uh, people and their mental health. We've got some information in the bags. If you don't need it, please pass it on to someone that you think might also need it. I'd just like to give a little bit of a promotion for, um, I'm not sure how to describe it, except I'll read it out. Are you a firefighter first responder? Have you been affected by the fires? Do you feel tired? Can't be bothered? Just too much to do? Never catch up? What about family? Maybe it's time to take a short break away. Six days in the North Flinders with others impacted. 28th of April to the 3rd of May, no cost, nothing to lose, rebuild your resilience. And it's been put together by Trojans Trek. I met with um, Moose Dunlop last night at Pandana and there's some brochures there on the, on the table there so uh, perhaps if you fit the criteria, contact um, Trojans Trek uh, or you might want to again pass it on to someone else uh, who could benefit. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attendance today. I'd like to thank uh, our speakers. Nikki, Lynn, Rebecca and Andrew, thank you very much for attending today. And re-emphasising um, each of the speakers, including myself, will be available to talk to you about the issues. Uh, certainly hearing um, the concerns that you have, I'm meeting with my counterparts and the Australian Small Business Family Enterprise Ombudsman next week in Canberra and I'll be taking that particular issue in relation to concessional loans but also the broader issues that have emerged uh, up with uh, Kate Carnell because she has a direct line into uh, the federal government and let's see what we can do to help you. Um, we are all available to assist you. Uh, I, I will be backwards and forwards on the island as I have been for the last five weeks. Um, we will provide our contact details. If you have particular issues with the grant programs or indeed the concessional loan programs that you haven't been able to navigate or there's been a rejection, um, please don't hesitate to contact me in my office and we will work with the agency uh, concerned to see if we can resolve uh, any issues that might be arising. Uh, thanks again today, thanks to Brett uh, and obviously the Mayor and Mike Williams, uh, the coordinator, and I'd like to thank the Ozone uh, here for their hospitality and uh, uh, 
putting uh, the place on at very short notice uh, in terms of this event. Thank you.